Hey guys, Dave with Nerdarchy here for Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with some of my esteemed colleagues. We've got Nate the Nerdark and Ryan. Hey. Hey there. So, uh, you know, the Monster Manual just came out the other day. We picked one up. As you can see, we got it. We, um, I've had some time to look at it. We meaning one. you at, at, yeah. Yeah, yeah. at present. Right. I got so. to touch it. Yeah, I, at I least did, twice. I did. I, I have some of the ink. The ink stank. Yeah, on yeah, my yeah. Hands so, so we, you got the monster manual. We, we ripped this part of book, this book apart a lot, and told you guys all about fifth edition and the rules and what we thought. And then, now we got this book, and you know, again, but I, I love the cover art on both of these books, and they got that weird thing going on with the, the, uh, the shiny glossy. Yeah, yeah, and then the uh, the mat on the back, which gives it a texture. I kind of like it. It's different print finishes. And your yeah. books won't slide as much, I guess. Do uh, you think that was the intent? Eh, no, nah, I don't know. It, it, it feels good to hold it, though. Yeah, yeah. nice. It, it is, you know, in this tactile yeah. world of ours. Yeah. 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 So, so like I said, I love the art on the front of this book. And, and it seems like the appropriate thing to do to be panicking when you're faced with a beholder is to, you know, run and look terrified. Yeah, yeah. Well, that so, person is. The dwarf looks like he's ready to throw down. Just because he doesn't know any better. <laughs> the, the spell cast, well, he knows a thing or two about beholder. He, like, he, he's gtfo and especially yeah, his anti-magic, you know, uh, anti-magic eye facing him. He's so like, we got oh, no. 352 pages of terrible, horrible monsters here. So... What do you think? Should we should we crack this bad boy open and show the folks what's inside? I think we should make that happen. All right, so now let's uh, we got our monster manual. Let's open it up and show you guys what we got. Here we are at the table of contents, and the very first uh, page. Which and uh, one of the nice things that they've done with these books so far is they do the cover art on the inside, and they you know, and they have the artist and, and a little bit of information about it, which uh, which I kind of enjoy. Right, and then there's the the classy disclaimer you may have seen circulating around the internets. Uh, basically alludes to the fact that Wizards of the Coast is run by illithids, which we had our suspicions, you know. So, you know, a little bit of humor, tongue-in-cheek, it's good stuff here. Um, the book is a combination of black and white and color illustrations. Um, we're going to do a flip through. We're not going to... We're not going to hit everything. Um, beginning of the book is what you would expect to find. The basic, you know, this is a monster manual. This is how we use our monster manual. This is your monster manual on drugs? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know. There's many monster manuals, but this monster manual is mine. You know. It's very special. It's very special. So, um, and actually, you know, I enjoyed this section, which I know you guys haven't read it yet, but in the very beginning when it talks about where do your monsters dwell, and it talks about the dungeons towns and cities the wilderness under uh underwater the underdark and and it really it's um it's concise and it's useful information so it's about those kind of conversations you'll have you know with your young adventurers about where do monsters come from pretty much that's yeah. right when a mommy monster and a daddy monster <laughs> me and, and yeah, they yeah, have yeah. a special connection special bond right. but you know it's really nice because it gives uh, a new gm new dm a, a an nude, idea a new gm yeah, yeah a new gm nude yeah. A nude GM, an idea of how to use uh, the, the the various monsters and, and just gives you some ideas, some fodder, you know. So with that, what do we got here? We have well, it's Dungeons and Dragons. I see a dungeon right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you gotta have dungeons in the Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Um, it talks a little bit about uh, in the beginning here, legendary creatures, which is uh, and le legendary actions, which is new, which I absolutely love. Because the, the problem with uh, your big bads has always been the economy of actions. You know, your players always have way too many actions, and your monsters, don't I know it. Your monsters <laughs> don't have enough. Yeah. Well, this gives you cool things that happen at you know, certain points in the encounter, not on the monster's turn. Mm. Some of these effects only happen in the lair. Some of these things are specific to the monster. Some of them are specific to the region, like... Yeah, you know, like things are in the miles Arctic away. Or whatever, yeah. Things miles away are happening. Like, you know, magma is erupting from the ground. Magma. Yeah. Magma. Yeah. Good. Screw you, player. Screw you. You die. <laughs> yeah. All right. You die. Um, you get burned by lava. I'm gonna cover this up. We do not want our, your first exposure <laughs> to the four, the fifth edition art of the monster manual to be the abhorrolith. 
Um, because it's kind of terrible. All right, I'm gonna take my hand away. But look, it it gets better. It gets better. This is one of like about 10 percent of the not so good monster art. Sorry. Now, now, okay. So this book has got a lot of things going on. There's a lot of really good art in this book, but there's some stinkers too. Mm. Uh, you know, look, you, we are big fans of fifth edition, but you know, I, you know, I can't tell you that this is an awesome piece of art mm. when when I'm not enjoying it. You know, but you know, when I read the actual Abolith uh, entry, they're pretty badass. So the monster, not, and then like there's nitpicky things like, so we love our Aarakocra. They changed them pretty substantially. The, you know, this iteration of the Aarakocra looks way closer to like the Kenku. Do you remember the Kenku? Yes. They, the, Ken, the Kenku yeah. is a humanoid bird creature. But, whereas like, but they have the Kenku in here. But the the, uh, the Kenku have always been flightless. These guys clearly fly. Yeah. yeah, if you're if you're familiar with uh, the Crocro from previous editions, this that, this can, this Eric Crocro does not fly with me. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> especially you know in Dark Sun, the big thing about them was they couldn't use their hands while they were flying, because because uh, yeah, they're a part of the wing structure. They they could use their feet and they would throw javelins at you with their feet, which is kind of cool. But yeah, and they're like vultures. They look like badass, big, like lanky vultures. So these creatures. are highly humanized. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they're cool. They're human. You know, hawkoids. Mm -hmm. I would call them a hawkoid. That, that's what that looks like to me. Hawkular. You know, they're very the, the proper term. Proper so term. It, it, there's not. The, it, they're not bad. The drawing's not bad. It's just not. They they made it. They made a, a change. Just a little bit of nerd rage on that one. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, we got some, we got some pretty sweet, uh, some pretty sweet angel art here. I like the... <laughs> some beefcake art for the yeah. ladies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Getting I like jealous. these guys. These guys they did a really good job with. Yeah. They're sharp. Um, the animated object, that, that that's who the art yeah. I would want to run away from that or wear it. I don't know. Uh, one or the other. So if you put on a suit of animated armor, is that like a mech? It's like a mech. It's ye old mech. Nice. Um, the... The Ankeg, you know, an oldie but favorite, they really beefed them up. I mean, that thing looks armored to the teeth. Like, you couldn't, you can't get through that with a lance charging on a heavy war horse. Yo, that, to, it, to me, that looks like, um, kind of like a StarCraft monster. Like a StarCraft, you know, Oh, like yeah, a like a Zerg. Yeah, yeah. Like a tank it's Zerg. like a Zerg yeah. on steroids. Yeah. That's the one that burrs into the other enemy's base and makes the it tunnel. shoots the spine, yeah. The Ultralisks. Yeah. There you go. Uh, we have the Azer and, and the Banshee here. This... The, these two pages, I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. There's actually other other uh, spectral creatures in this book that would make better Banshees than the Banshee. Yeah. Image-wise, image-wise. Again, you know, here's a perfect illustration, the Basilisk, of one of my problems with the art in this book. Elephantitis. Cankles. Everything's <laughs> got cankles. A lot of these monsters have these... Uh, like, if you look from the legs up, it looks really kind of cool. But like I don't I get the thunder thighs on them and the and the and the beefy tail. Yeah, you know, we were we were discussing this before we were rolling a little bit. Like I don't mind so much um, with the the monster stuff when they start to do that on the more like human esque type of yeah. things. That's when it throws me off. Like this, this reminds me of like you know maybe some renderings of dinosaurs and uh, big strong muscular. Well, legs. well, but, here, and here's the other thing too for me like like with the beaver. I liked the older editions where it was looked more crocodilian, mm. and this looks more so. I mean, you know, maybe I'm just being nitpicky, but you're I, a jerk. I, yeah. I'm a jerk. Yeah. I, I've been heavily you influenced like it by the way previous it was. editions. I I did. You know, for years I played third edition and AD and D, so I kind of got like in my mind, you know, what these monsters look like from those pictures, and it, it stuck. So one cool thing that we I haven't really gotten to explore that much because I've only gotten to look at this for about 35 minutes before we rolled was the, the cool things are these little like note pieces like it's kind of like somebody's journal writing about the monsters that's going yeah, on. Yeah, sometimes it's also sayings from the monsters too. Yeah. Like like they had the the one from the goblin is kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cuz the devil uh, the man the I went right to the carrying crawler. I wanted to show them the one from the goblin, but I went, uh, let me say this is one of the first images I opened up to in the book. Mm. And I hate it. I I, I hate this carrying crawler. I, you know, carrying crawler has always been one of my favorite monsters. And I, it, you know, even in the like the old edition, like uh, first and second, maybe it was more cartoony looking, but I just liked it better. You, you know, like the carrying crawler is always like kind of looked like a caterpillar on yeah. acid. A caterpillar on acid. I, I want the caterpillar look. I uh, like the caterpillar. Yeah. This one, like, I don't think it's bad. I mean, some of the rendering, I feel like, just could have been a little bit stronger. Again, it looks a little chunky in the back. Well, yeah, little... here's what I found, too, in this book. 
a, a lot of times uh, there's a color piece in here that I don't care for, but the black and white piece is much better. Yeah, the, the, well, the sketch. You art, know, sometimes like. that happens with art in general is mm. like there's a lot more energy in the pencil sketch. Like it just comes through. Now this page, awesome. Chimera, the, yeah, looking bad. Chimera is friggin' nice. I I love the Chimera, and you know, and while we're talking about it, like um. When the read through on the, on these are so much better than fourth edition, mm. you know, uh, and not to make it a fourth or fifth edition thing, but um, in fourth edition they did a thing where they got away from doing the textual, um, letting you know anything about the monster other than it's a thing that the PCs fight and kill. I, you know, I kind of hate it. I hate it when when you had to rely wholly on the picture for the descriptor yeah. of it. I actually like the you know I like to read the description. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, not necessarily to my players, but I, I don't know. It just does something for me in my brain. I, depending, Sometimes it's a jumping off point. Of yeah, like how you want to take. It gives it. you a better idea of where you're coming from with the with the monster as a as the DM or the game master, and then also from there you can kind of uh, adjust the description. You know, mad but th this to put one, in what this you need one to put is in. really cool too. In 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 the whole description and um, conflicted creatures, it basically. You know, in the conflicted creature section, what it basically goes in on to tell you about is how the uh, the chimera has combined the three worst traits of each of these creatures to to make it just really a kind of a miserable creature. An Henri thing you don't want to deal with. Yeah. yeah, like you know, like the the, the chimera is a prick, and the reason why it's a prick. It's because it's... It know, hates living with these other bros. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's like three guys who don't like each other. Yeah, Yeah. well, they go into it. And how it combines the negative traits of a dragon and a lion and the goat. Um, not the physical traits, but the actual... Personalities. Like, personalities, animals, yeah. yeah. So oh, I, God, I, got, I can't look, stand living with my, my Ram roommate. He's always... Bah, bah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I got a kick out of that. You know, it talks about the terror territorialness of the lion, the stubbornness of, of the ram, and the hoarder the hoardingness of the So he's got shit everywhere all over the yeah, lair. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's even really a word. Chul, that's kinda what I expect from the chul from third edition. The, it, well cloaker, here's here's a perfect example of a monster that I think they improved on. Yeah. This looks way better than first edition for sure. <laughs> and uh, you know, even a third I, I think that, that cloaker looks a lot meaner. You know, like sometimes when the art is really like spectacular on some things. <laughs> I wish they gave the art more breathing room on the page, and like yeah. they really packed the monster. This this book is mashed full of monsters. There's no way, it's, it's a other way to say it. Like so, sometimes you know, like look at all the room that they give the cockatrice yeah. because it's it's text light, um, so they can give it this whole like you know more than half the page. Whereas like this. Um, you know, like, celestial being is just like, eh, I'm in the little margin of the page. And well, you know, and that's probably, that's the problem with the monsters that are... More they're, in depth. Yeah, yeah. They, require more, they require more in depth explanation. But, and then you have the cockatrices, like this weird chicken that can turn you to stone. The Enough end. said. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And its eggs taste horrible. Right. Yeah. But with that being said, you get a great picture. You yeah. get a sweet picture, that's right. Uh... Crawling Claws, Eyeclops. This is, uh, here's Mr. September in his seductive, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna kill you pose. That's right. Another little thing for the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're chock full of those. So, we have the Dark Mantle, mm -hmm. looking kind of goofy. Uh, Lord Soft. Death Knight Lord Soft, classic. Fantastic. You can't say anything about it because it's Lord Soft or he'll kill you. That's right. Murder you by death. Demi Lich. It's really hard to mess up the Demi Lich because really it's a skull with some with some gems on the eyes. Yeah, it's like for your first year art so, school. So to be able to render a skull. <laughs> we're just gonna flip Let's through see. some demons. And uh, look, like uh, I, I like this one. This is a good one. I don't, how do you pronounce that, Nate? You're much smarter than me. Uh, Glaberzu. Glaberzu. Labrizu, I'm, I'm not really sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, demo I'm, my, my demonic's a little rusty. You gotta start <laughs> listening to more metal, man. That's, yeah, that's where that's. Labrizu, Labrizu, something. Like I mean, that. I do like the sort of um, the way the pages look sort of archival. That's kind of cool to it. You know, like it looks like something an old journal. Yeah, uh, and look what else they did. They they took the Marilith and they put a shirt on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they got a PC with that. Yeah. 
I can deal with some demon boobs. Well, here's some demon boobs for you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, They put the shirt on the Marilith and they gave us this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, that's sultry. Now, that's Mr. November. Yeah. Well, what do you think of that Quasa, man? <sighs> Looks really insectoid. I kind of... That's what gives me the feeling of, anyway. I kind of liked the Quasa when they were a little more, um... They're, you know, like they were demonic, but they're kind of comical. Like something go that... Goopy? You, yeah, well, not even goofy. I don't know. Like, not goofy, goopy. They look goopy. goopy. Well... It was just, I've always been into, like, when the imp and the closet were, like, something that, they were kind of a-holes, but they could also, they could pal around with you, but they'd be that friend that's not really a good friend for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it's secretly screwing you behind your back in different ways. Oh, uh, yeah, you're not getting that feel from this guy? No, that thing just wants to eat you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's I, eat your soul. I agree, like, th this closet, though, actually, the art is fun. I like oh, the yeah, art. Oh, the, the art's art. good. Yeah. And, but you're right, like, this guy is not the buddy that's, like, secretly going to drag your soul to hell. This guy looks like he's going to eat your face. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> so, going to pop out one of your eyes with a spoon at night. That would be a pretty sweet quickling. Just saying. Yeah, you know what? That's one of the things I was disappointed in that's not in here. Yeah, quicklings are fun. Uh, let's see. we got more devils over here. I don't like the Photoshop-y of that chain. That's kind of ridiculous. All right. So we could have did without that. Those are pretty cool. I like not those. Not bad. I, you know, I feel like they did, did the imp. Again, not bad, but again... I, I like that imp. That imp I can get down with. I, I can have a beer with that imp. <laughs> you could have a... <laughs> It'd be poison beer. But yeah, it'd be, all right. He's like, the, your beer is actually poison. Damn you, imp. All right, let's have another beer. Right. <laughs> this blazer beast, man. Yeah. Well, he's decent. It's, I like uh, him. Yeah. You know, they didn't screw him up. It, there's a lot of good stuff in the, uh, the description. Remember that really awkward, like, alien-looking one? Like, it was an emaciated alien. That, was that third, or was that... I think uh, it was I fourth. Like that was, that was I think that was fourth. I thought it was third. I, third, third looked a little off, too. Um, and it went even further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. We're going to skip the Dracolich, but the only thing we want to point out, Dracolich is a template for dragons. There is there is only, like, a half a dozen templates in this whole entire book, and three of them are dragon. Well, you know, it is Dungeons & Dragons, <laughs> so we want to put the emphasis on Yo, the dragons. Wait well, for the dungeon but we got to stop here. Young Red Shadow Dragon. Because hmm. Shadow Dragon is also a template. Yeah. It's not a dragon anymore. It, I guess it got uh, demoted. They downsized. But I love that picture. It's really cool. Yeah. He looks like he'll do some soul eating, too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's see if we can't find... Again, like, the dragons wish there was more, like, bigger page images of them. Yeah. It's a freaking dragon. There's yeah. a nice gold dragon. It's decent. It's got the droopy things on the thing. The art doesn't blow me away on that one, but, you know. It's kind of like they tried to mix the, uh, the thin Japanese dragons with the, uh... Yeah. yeah. They definitely went for that. Dryer, dry, dryad, drider. Drider. I like the cap. You do? Edder cap's fun. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not feeling this Edder cap. He's bulbous. He's spidery. He'll eat your face. He'll eat your face, uh. yeah. They do a lot of this variant stuff, so... There's little changes that you can make to the monsters that uh, they just incorporate it for you. Fairy dragon. I love the fairy dragon. I thought that's a freaking sweet picture of a fairy dragon. He doesn't look so pleasant. Doesn't though. look super pleasant. looks like an uh, unseely fairy yeah. dragon. But, <laughs> well, you know, you know I, I, the art is good. Yeah. He, he had a bad day. What do you want? Yeah, he's he's PO'd. You know, the flump is back for you guys, for you old grognards. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Femor Femorian looks... Appropriately hideous. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm your. Yeah, there's the feet again. <laughs> what do you think of this gargoyle, man? What about that guy? It's pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nah, not, not loving that gargoyle. Not loving the gargoyle that much. Yeah. He looks like he's made out of rock. But hey, here's the Redeemer page. These guys, the G, uh, the oh, genies. The gins, yeah. The yeah. gins. These guys are pretty freaking sweet. Yeah, those are solid through and through. Well, and you know what? Here's the problem. Here's here's my problem anyway. Is you get that gargoyle right, and then you turn to these pages, and you're like, "What the fuck was that art director thinking? That like these go in the book, and that goes in? The, eh, I don't know. I don't get it." Well, I mean, they're not that disproportionately off. I just feel like certain artists, like I think there's a style was, difference between several of the artists. Well, here's the thing. So the, all the genies are look like they're consistently done by the same the same artist. And so that one, that person knocked him out of the park. And then the other one, like, probably one of their earlier assignments, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, here's another really weak spot in the book when it comes uh, to the art. I'm pretty... The Giants. I'm kind of sad about this one, yeah. They, they they really got murdered. But, you know, look, 
that being said, I, I know it sounds like we're kind of ripping on it and tearing on it a bit, but at the end of the day, this book is chock full of monsters. The stats and the way it's presented is solid. The layout is great. Um, yeah, it's really helpful for for putting them into the different Yeah, really, campaigns. the thing is, for the fact that there's so much in here, that that's why like a lot of the art wasn't given the breathing room it should have and this and, and that. But yeah, yeah, I think it, it really they needed more space, but then you get less monsters. So what do you want at the end of the day? Yeah. Again, the more of the notes. I love the notes. We're getting ready to turn some really nice looking monsters. And again, you know, it's the monsters that got a lot of page space, and they came out really good. You know, Gith Yankee and Gith Zarel. But you don't see enough play in our world. That's a different take on a on a knoll. I like that knoll. He's got. It looks like he's probably got some sort of mange going on. Yeah. It's like if you mix the uh, the, the hyenas hyena. from the Lion King, <laughs> and uh, and you know traditional knolls, you get yeah. that. Snarf Neblin. I, I kind of like it. You know, it doesn't scream deep gnome to me, but I like the art. It's yeah. it's just a different take on it. That one hangs out at the tavern every day after work. He's got <laughs> yeah. a beer going yeah. nice. Now the goblins. My, the Neanderthals. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do look a little Neanderthals. Pygmy, Pygmy Neanderthals. Yeah. But, you know, my fa look, one of my favorite things in this book is the goblin boss. And his he's got a reaction, a special ability, yeah. where uh, when a creature the goblin can see targets it with an attack the goblin chooses another goblin within five feet of it the two goblins swap places and the chosen goblin becomes a target instead i love that that's hilarious it's such a dick move yeah and it's so goblin yeah yeah they're like yo you <laughs> no you over there, it's not even the it's, it basically grabs him by the scruff of his uh his shoulder <laughs> throws him in the way of the yeah. attack and gets the heck out of the dodge so yeah i really love that that's really cool so what do we got here? We got some golems. These are, again, they're kind of hit and miss. The Gorgon. Not bad. It's it's a metal bowl. It's a metal. Grells and Gricks. They're weird monsters. I, I like them. Grells and Gricks. That could be an alternative game of Dungeons and Dragons. Grells it it and could be. I think so, man. Or maybe a metal song. Hmm. Or a pub. Yeah. Grells and Gricks of the Underworld would be a metal song. The Grimlocks. They really, really changed up the Grimlocks. They're kind of weird. Like before, they really looked kind of like savage and berserkerish. Uh, the, the Grimlock, yeah, they had like almost like a, a caveman thing. Yeah, yeah, they they're, they're kind of jacked. Now they kind of look like I don't like know scrawny ogres. Yeah, <laughs> well, like they're really flabby looking. They're like uh, seventy-year-old pro wrestlers. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, they were jacked at one point, but all the steroids and stuff have eroded. And now, what you gonna do, tough guy? And yeah. It's like Hacksaw Jim Duggan comes out. He's got no eyes. And, yeah. We got the hags again. They got these, the sidebar ha uh, night hag magic items, and it goes into the the Hearthstone and Soul Bag, which is really cool lore stuff. You don't want to be a Soul Bag. Yeah, I, I passed the uh, Drow a while back, and. That, that's where you would have seen they, they, they put in the alternate uh, drow magic item stuff where basically, you know, this, after an hour in the sunlight, it's, it's, it's done. Which is always like the ultimate dick move for the DM to use the drow because they used all those great magic items on the party. You but but the you service. can't use because they, the magic fades. It's awesome. Oh yeah, just become a subterranean denizen. Now, freaking harpy, that's fantastic. That's really cool art. Right there. You're loving on the harpy. Yeah. What about the half dragon? I like the half dragon. One of the other yeah. templates in the book. I'm part man. I'm part dragon. Yeah. Eh. Like no, wings, like no wings though. No wings. You know, my, my feeling on the half dragon is if they're a template that gets stacked on to the other races, I feel like the other race part of aspect of it should be a lot more prevalent. You know, in in the way they look, just perfect well, taste. It's definitely not there. Yeah. There pretty much looks like a dragon man. Yeah, like, uh, it, basically that could be a dragon board, and I wouldn't know the difference at all. Well, it's it's a skinny dragon board. No dragon boobs. No dragon boobs. Hellhound. Yes, Hellhound. I am pro Hellhound. He looks like somebody that can call fire on you. Like, I love the illuminated <laughs> chest on there. Yeah. That's, that's badass. It's nice. Helmhar, I like that. It's not bad. A little HH action, yeah. Uh, Griffin, or Hippogriff. Griffin was earlier. That guy looks like he's just shy of getting ready to take a leak off the side of this precipice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, dog, you're in the way. Watch out, I'm yeah, paying yeah, here. Yeah. The Hobgoblin. Yeah. You know, the Hobgoblin, I don't mind the art. It's, it's definitely, they've gone a different direction with the goblins. The goblinoids in general. The goblins, the Hobgoblins, the bugbears. They're different. I'll tell you what, though. The Hobgoblin Warlord, CR6. 
he will jack you up. 20 armor class. Extremely high in this edition. Deadly. Yeah, well, luckily, hopefully he won't be fighting something like that until like 4th Hydra. Level. Hydra has the ability to wreck you. Hell Hydra. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, uh, this is Ryan's favorite. <laughs> uh, no. so, I, I so, like more... Uh, Modrons? Modrons? Modrons. I can't say it right. Is that, I like, is that like Motown? Motown. I like Motown Modrons, uh, but I don't necessarily like... They look not so clockwork. They don't look so made out of metal. They don't look very Tony D.R. Lizzy. D.R. Lizzy. Yeah, D.R. Lizzy's way of doing them is way... They're lacking the steampunk aspect and the metal face And like feel. this guy's got a gap tooth. Come on. <laughs> you can't respect a modern with a gap tooth. Yeah, but... Because they're supposed to be like perfect and lawful and balanced and... But that being said, like they're back. They are. Yeah. So what well, else? I mean, they brought it as a major element of the addition. And, yeah. Well, and also that tells us what else is coming. That means Plain Sand is so coming back. Hard. Dude, it's been mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. So, which is kind of cool. The mummy. This is a different, a bit of a different mummy. It's a good mummy. This is a good mummy. This is a falling apart mummy where you're like, oh, I'm not afraid of you. Look at your falling apart. Next thing you know, you got mummy rot in places you don't even want to talk about. Uh, no, nope, and nope. Uh, it's just a bad deal. Mike and Ike. <laughs> or Mike and Oid. <laughs> the Mike and Oids, I love Mike and Ike, and then they got their pet right yeah, here. Yeah, the Mike and Oids are really cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that, overall, that, that's so nice. And again, look, they got the whole page. The artist had some room to work. They came out really good. Um, let's flip. Let's flip a few more because I'm not going to do a few. Yeah. Oh, uh, the piercer's back. The piercer, uh, I'm I fall and I can't get <laughs> up. Uh, uh. I'm not loving the piercer. He needs his life alert. I'm not <laughs> loving the piercer out of his shell. It yeah. just look, it doesn't look so good. But you know, the again, the the uh, black and white ink work, you know, with them showing them hanging, looks pretty decent. And honestly, I'm glad the piercer's back. I love that monster for a low level PCs. I love the ambushing you guys with them. You know what's interesting is, um, so they had in various editions like. I think they did away with the Piercer um, in 3rd edition, but they had the Dark Mantle. Like, the Dark Mantle was the answer to the Piercer when they took the Piercer away. So now they have both of them in, in the core book. Um, so they can just, make a terrifying Yeah, game. yeah you can, just a cave of terror where just things start falling from the ceiling and they get just one attack on you. And we, and we got the Pixie here. Ted was loving on the Pixie. I bet. I like the Pixie as well. There's Rust Monster, I mean, that looks like... An, I've seen that edition, that rendition of the Rust Monster drawn differently, but pretty much the same. It hasn't yeah, changed much. Yeah, not too, too much. Now that, now no, that's, no, 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 we're not even going to talk. That was a Sahara. <laughs> Look at the skeleton. It's, the skeleton is so good looking. Yeah, <laughs> a fantastic skeleton. Yeah, better that than the, the Sahara. Is that a mil Minotaur skeleton? That is, a min that is a Minotaur. Fantastic. And then that, that leads us right into the... Slads, I like the slads. They, they look good. I'm pretty happy. You know, I, I, you know, I really gained a lot more respect for slads when I see that they can even love a monkey. Yeah, but that <laughs> monkey. So I wonder if that was modeled after Jeffrey Rush from uh, from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe, Sparrow maybe. Monkey. We got our our death uh, our death slad, Spectre. I like the Spectre. It's Evil Eddie. Oh, <laughs> uh, here's the elephant Titus feet. Yeah. Yeah, again, yeah. like, you know, le when it's not on the humanoids, it's yeah. not as bothersome. Yeah, the sprite, I like the sprite. That's a good picture of a sprite. Uh, the, you know what, this is one of the things in this book that really struck me as odd. Is the the uh, Hot Topic catalog, Succubi <laughs> Incubi? <laughs> yeah, 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 well, that. And the fact that they put them over here and not with the demons and devils. Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah, it was weird, it was weird. And then uh, we dress alike, we act like we're double mint twins. <laughs> Something like uh, that. The Tarrasque, I mean, you yeah. guys probably may have seen this one uh, floating Late around. Late long internets. And we got a unicorn. And we got vampires. And it actually does a little sidebar on va uh, vampires as player characters. I'm not suggesting no, that, but a, a terrible but, idea. But you know, if it happens to happen to your character, they 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 address it a little bit. Um, and they even talk about Strahd, Strahd, Count Strahd well, which is awesome. Fantastic. You know, one of the things that struck me weird as weird. Hey, here we are at the water weird. Is that you know, they they there's a lot of monsters in here. I would expect to be templates, and they're not. They're just straight up monster statistics. Like the Lich, you know, like, yeah, like yeah, the Lich, the, the, the Death Knight, the Vampire. Um, 
Yeah, it's just and, like it shouldn't be a one size fits all solution because these things should be very then, varied. But then there's the Shadow Dragon, the Draco Lich, and the Half Dragon are all templates. Yeah, it is kind of odd. So, Hopefully they. So I don't know. We'll see what they do with that later and and, and other things. So, like DMG is supposed to uh, really address some things. Yeah. Uh, you know the white. I like this white. This is a heavy heavy metal white. Yeah. Again, a bit of an Evil Eddie Iron Maiden thing happening here. Which I enjoy. Will Wisp. It's really hard to mess up a wall, Wes. Can you paint a piece of light? It is <laughs> yes. yes. All right, you're hired. <laughs> Shadow, or no, the Wraith. This is a, definitely an incorporeal creature done yeah, well. Yeah, it does. Yes. Yeah, no. Some, you know, this, whoever did this sh should have done the Banshee as well. Yeah. Maybe it was. I don't know. And if they did do the Banshee as well, they should have done the Banshee like the Wraith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably not the same artist on that. It, look, got, it has a little bit of a Ring Wraith Nazgul thing happening, but, you know. Which bit, works. You know, they're both well, Wraiths. They're both Wraiths. Not feeling the Yeti. Not feeling the Yeti. But the Zorn's cool. I like the Zorn. Yes. Mm. See, now this is where the el the elephant feet work for me. Yeah. It just makes sense for this monster. Mm. Oh, it's a giant sack of uh, rockiness. Uh, Yetis. Uh, the Yanti, half uh, pure blood. Nice. Again, you know, they do the the, uh, the variant stuff, which is all throughout the book. Which just gives you more options. Yugoloths, which are the weird neutral evil demons and devils. Uh, zombies. Some undead goodness. Uh, zombies are too interesting mechanically, too, because they're really freaking hard to kill. Unless you crit them or uh, finish them off with radiant damage. So they're doing a way more like horror movie zombies. Yeah, basically. they tend to keep getting back up. Huh. They're, yeah, they're kind of jerks like that. Okay, so here, I like they the have appendix. A beholder zombie. They do have a beholder zombie. I like the appendix in this book because it's just it's huge for one. And it's just full of a bunch of the monsters that you don't really need to take up a lot of space. So they forego a lot of pictures yeah. on these ones. The eagle, the giant crab. The giant, giant rat. rat. Do you uh, know what a rat looks like? Make it bigger. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and then they also get the, the, the variant for the disease-ridden giant rat. Mm. Um, and, you know, the thing, the dire monsters are gone. The dire animals. And they've gone back to old school and just made them giant again. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, giant dire is just fancy wording. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they get, they have a dire wolf, but everything else they kind of. I like back. how they have the armor mastiff. Yeah, although if you look at his hit points, he's really pathetic. So if you're like a small character using him for a mount, it's not gonna he's not gonna last very long. You want him to be able to level somehow, because otherwise so, yeah, it doesn't look good. You want to be the <laughs> mastiff playing the character, and you want to have the character as the henchman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, there's tons of stuff and things like things like the face spider, you know, they they put it in here. Um what else? Uh the death dogs, uh winter wolves. Well the things that aren't gonna be as thinking, you know, and plotting. Swarm. Um, you know, the swarms are back, which is good. I like the swarm concept. Here we are with our wolves. Here's a goblin riding a warg. And did I? Oh yeah, this is a section I wanted to. I definitely wanted to show you guys. I like this. The, the non-player character NPC. It's basically you know your human bad guys, or people that you interact with. You know. Yeah, and there, you know, there's a ton of stuff on that. Uh, so you know, this is the, these these are really useful. I, I like this. This is something that's probably been missing from a lot of the other editions where you had to do a lot more work. Yeah, when you just need a bunch of guys in a tribe. What's a random guy in a tribe? Well, he's got this many hit points. He's worth this much CR, you know, challenge yeah, rating. Yeah. Save me, you know, save me creating that template of, yeah, I'll use that thing over and over again or whatever, but, you know, it'd be nice to not spend the 20 minutes making it and then just... Yeah, the it's, it's just easy, that, the, easy the that they put it in there. Yeah. So, and then from there we go into the stat block. So, that's pretty much our flip through. There's a pretty sweet thug that they had in the back. Of... The Dungeons and Dragons, fifth edition monster manual. Right. So, so we just flipped through the monster manual. You guys, you guys are pretty much looking at this for the first time, practically. I've had a little bit of time to to pour through it, and you know, first off, you know, I want to say to you guys that just watch us do it and listen to us that you know, we're, even though we were kind of critical of the art, there's so much more to the book than that. There's definitely some features that they put in there that I enjoyed. I enjoyed the opening of the book where it tells you about the different environments where you can find the monsters and, and kind of how to use them. I enjoyed, you know, 
that they do go in, into so much depth on the monsters in their psychology, what they're about, you know, that that's that's the important stuff because that's where it's going to seed your campaigns and your 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 adventures. Yeah, I really like the the flavor text, just like the little snippets of some guy talking about dealing with a monster or uh, for example, the demi the demilich, it's an actual demilich uh writing about itself, about its like immortality and eternal yeah, life. Yeah, like yeah, they have and, all the footnotes throughout the books. They look like yeah. little post-it notes or something. Yeah. Well, it's it's sort of that journal format. That's, you know, I mean, that's been, you know, done in other art forms. It gets or, you like, it gets books. you into the whole the whole scene of it. Well, you know what? It feels like a lot of, um, like, a mythology art book. Like, the things that, like, Brian Froud has done in the past. Or, like, you know, like, the kids' books where it's, like, all about pirates or dragons or whatever, and it's just, like, big, you know, like, all these different notes sort of thing. Like, it has that kind of feel to it where it's, like, you know, this is journal chock full of information about these things. Like when you're writing campaign and when you're writing uh, people who write books and they're writing a fantasy novel and they have books written by characters inside the book or journals written by the characters inside the book it always adds that depth it's like you know looking at a picture that's looking at a picture kind of thing well like it's that. like world building from the inside yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah. it's that it's that same concept they do a good job so, of world building through yeah that. so i like that i like all the variants in the, in the different monsters um you know it's just a small sidebar but it's just enough to give you those changes or or add you know a wall you know if your if your ice de deeming is or devil is using uh, you know the pike and, or the glaive instead of just attacking unarmed, this is like their iconic weapon. This is what it looked like or looks like. Or you know you have the hags and they have their magic items. You have the drow, which you know can be stacked with magic items, which again we discussed. Fat stacks of magic items. <laughs> you know it screws over your players <laughs> because they after exposure to sunlight for an hour it all goes away. Yeah, some fool's gold for you. <laughs> silly, uh, silly adventurer. My items are for are, are for tricks. Like, you know, it's yeah, just gonna disintegrate in the sun, and you're kind of boned. Boo hoo. Mm. Yeah. So, like I said, there's there's a ton of good stuff in the book, and there's a lot of lot of monsters, and and I think you know, I think the art suffered for that. Yeah, yeah. For mm -hmm. and I'm okay with it. Well, I mean, it, it's kind of um, the 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 monster illustrations were like an added feature too it's not like the the primary thing almost like you, you could tell like you know like the monsters are kind of some of them are just kind of fit in there especially the more you know like text squished heavy. they felt squished so, yeah yeah so the the more text heavy monsters especially like dragons like, should get way more breathing room than they have like a page. mind trying to get out of a box yeah <laughs> that's right so. so you know so with that being said it's i think it's a great buy especially you know you can pick it up on amazon for like 30 bucks yeah, it's a little pricey at yeah, retail. Yeah, but you know, sometimes you guys just gotta have it. True. And uh, true. you know, and I just felt like I had to have it, so I went down to the local, uh, friendly local uh, gaming store, picked up mine, reserved it a couple days ago, which are always good for that. So, you, so it's good too. You get to support those guys, and you have, but you have to pay a little bit extra. And Watts, to their credit, you know, they, you know, they've done something that's nice to help support your local guy. And that is letting them become, um, you know, a Watts approved store or whatever, where they get the stuff early, so that it motiv it motivates people like me to go. You know what? I'm instead of getting it from Amazon for almost half the price, I want to have it now early, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go to the local guy and get it. So I mean, in, in this day and age, when when you know most big companies are being bashed and torn apart for that kind of stuff, they're actually doing something that kind of helps. Helps the little guy. Right. Mm -hmm. Helps supporting retail. Yeah, exactly. So with that, I mean, that's the Monster Manual, folks. In yep. a nutshell. Tons of monsters, NPCs, lots of animals. Some layers, even. Good, yeah, layer, regional. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's definitely, they introduce a lot of new concepts, but they also bring back a lot of the old concepts. And I feel like this Monster Manual has more monsters than any other book in the edition has ever had. On the on the walkthrough for it, it felt like it. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, quite a bit of monsters, thick, it's and very thick. between the variants and the uh, the whole categories that have all the different. I you know I did a, I did a walkthrough kind of a flip through with uh, Nerdarchist Ted earlier, 
And he's like, man, we're only at H, and we've been flipping for like ten minutes now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you go by page by page, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, so like you, you don't really need any other monster books after you get this one, right? Um, well, I mean, of course you're going to want some, but yeah, yeah no, I mean, need, come on, we're, yeah. we're, we're gamers. That's what we do. We hoard monsters, but there is definitely enough to keep you busy for a while with this. You're not going to run mm-hmm. out of monsters anytime soon. Yeah. Although, so interesting, like the way that like all the like animal monsters were sort of like jammed into the one space because they they don't need a lot of breathing room on the page like whereas you compare that to like third edition where like you know you have like maybe two of those more mundane monsters two or three of them on the same page taking up all this book space where it's like all right it's a house cat or yeah, it's shove a, them in the back it's a jack yeah it's a you hall. know especially yeah. like um i guess the, the the real culprit in third would have been the dire mo- dire animals mm. where in this you know they're not dire anymore they they went back to being giant and they're like, well, look, dude, it's a frog. It's a toad. It's mm-hmm. a weasel. You know what they look like. You know what they do. And they it's a big work, one of work, them. Yeah, they work it out. It's just bigger. <laughs> just, think, just think bigger. Yeah. yeah. And, it, you know, it, and it made sense. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they, they kind of take that s- a similar approach with the NPCs, although they gave them more room than they did the animals, mm. but less room than the monsters. Right. right. So, which is good. I, you know, I find that helpful. You know, you're... You're in a town and you need to accost your players with some thugs. Mm. They're in the back of the book. You know, yeah. you don't have to make up rogues or. Uh, or all of a sudden, or all of a sudden, the, the PCs want to have an encounter with a with a noble, and you don't have stats on the noble. Well, all right, I have something on the fly. Yeah, yeah you can just pull it right. Yeah, from if there. you're a dirty, stinking thief and you want to steal from the local uh, religious center, you go like, oh, well, it's an acolyte that's going to be trying to watch out for people stealing stuff. It's like, yeah. oh, well, there he is in the back of the book. Yeah. And not the 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 fanatic cultist because he's got skull knee pads. So yeah, oh, you know what? Fourth edition. Guy. Know what's back from fourth edition too? What's that? Um, which I like this mechanic, the recharge. Hmm. Certain certain monsters instead of you know uh, having the use of a special ability certain certain times a day, instead you go you roll a die six and either you know it might be a set number, say a five or a six, and that, that it recharges their power. Hmm. So, like, the dragon's breath weapon, you don't know. He just breathed last round. Is he going to breathe again? I don't know. Well, yeah, that, that's nice because it, it sort of negates the counting that the players could do. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Every third round, we've got to huddle behind the shield kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. And, well, and then also, there's also the uh, legendary resistance. Great power for monsters. Hmm. You got, do you guys know what that is? Uh, no, not really. Read it. Okay. So, basically, how many times have you... Have you put out that big bad monster for your players, and the wizard casts a spell that just shuts them down? Yeah, that's happened. Yeah, on occasion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It does occasionally. Without happen. fudging the rolls, I mean. Well, a legendary resistance says, well, three times a day that monster can just say, "I pass the saving throw." That's nice. nice. That's handy. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. like, you know, we, I, they probably said, you know what, DMs have been doing it, like, doing this anyway. We might as well just yeah. make it a roll. Make it official. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then the other thing is legendary action. So. Yo, know, a monster will get to take a turn after a player takes a turn that's aside from its turn. And uh, a lot of the times it's like three times. Hmm. So, you know, it, it, it feels like, you know, this is the big, this is the dragon, right? So it should feel impressive and it should feel pretty, you know, lethal and devastating. And they are because there's things going on, like at, in between all the players' actions, it's taking an action. You know, in addition to that, things in the lair are happening. It's making the ceiling fall on them. It's making lava shoot out of the ground. Mm. You know, so, you know, it's causing tremors. Um, so, mm. th- you know, that, those mechanics are new and very interesting. Yeah, yeah. The dragon should feel great and terrible. Yeah, Rather than absolutely. just leaving it all up to claw, claw, bite, and whatever the DM can imagine happening for it, it's, it's nice to have that built in mechanic for it. Well, mm. yeah, because a lot of times the dragons. Yeah, when you fight a dragon, it should be really impressive. When you encounter that dragon, it should be terrifying. But like you know, it got to it would get to a point in a lot of games where it was just another monster, and, and you, your wizard could get lucky with a spell and shut it down for a couple of rounds, mm. and while you while the other players made freaking mincemeat out of it, you know. So you know, it never it never felt as never felt as epic as it should have been. And also, I, I think dragons uh, widely uh, vary upon uh, how creative and intelligent the GM is running it. Because, like, 
you need like the as tacticsy as as the GM can possibly be. All that needs to be brought to bear on a dragon because it's you know like a super genius level intelligence. Well, okay, and it's horrendously powerful. Let, let's look at that, right? So a good example is the encounter you ran with a psionic dragon of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, but that was a young like it, intelligence stats wise. It's nowhere near like the adult or the yeah. You know, but so you played it as an intelligent monster, hit and run tactics. But, you know, it's not really a fun encounter. Like, it is... Because it's not fun in the sense that the dragon isn't... You know, it couldn't mix it up with the players because it would just get annihilated. Well, problem being with that, it was too young to be a melee threat with you guys, and by the time it was old enough to be a melee threat, it would way overpower you. So there was no... There was, there was no, no middle, middle ground. ground. It was either a CR5 or a CR8. The CR eight you guys cannot handle, but so. but if it, even at CR eight and we are C, and we were the equivalent uh, character level to face it, yeah. it's still a lot of times it doesn't equal out without doing things like that. Where in this edition you yeah. don't have to do that stuff. The monster can get in there and do its thing and be in the middle of the players, and still be a threat. And it's not going to be a one hit wonder. It's not yeah. just going to go down. It can hang out for a couple rounds and it can be lethal. Yeah, well, you hope the dragon stays around for more than a couple, but yeah. Well, you know, this is, you know, 5th edition. The, the, the combats are much quicker yeah, and much more lethal. So, but, you know, that being said, I feel like they pack a lot more excitement into that time. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah. you know, like with a, an encounter you had to do, you, you, it has to be drug out over a long period of time. And, you know, you yourself said it felt taxing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that, and that was a, you know, a 3.75 Pathfinder game, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um and a lot of the counters were always like that. Fourth edition was even worse. Yeah. Cuz you know, it well, stretched some, out forever. Some things are a grind to run for sure. Yeah. Well, and you know, from what I'm seeing in, in fifth so far, less grindy. Yeah. You know, maybe when we get to the higher levels we'll see something different. Yeah. But, you know, from what I can see from the monsters I don't know. It, it just seems... The fights tend to be more decisive more quickly. Is kind of... Yeah, okay. and I kind of like it that way. Yeah. But yeah, as time tells, as time goes on, we can tell. We'll see what happens. But all in all, good book. I like it. Art, hit and miss. Um, the stuff that's really, really... is That's really good is really, really good. The stuff that's bad, it tends to be really bad. And uh, tons of monsters. If you're going to play 5th edition, go grab this book. You... It's okay. an asset. Well, you you, you kind of need it. So. Well, yeah, there is that, too. <laughs> there is that, too. Yeah. Well, you know, there's the free download. There's a ton of monsters in there, too, but I'm glad yeah. I picked up the book. Yeah, I'm glad you picked it up, too. Yeah. yeah. So, with, with that, that being said, right? Until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.